of the week and combat strategies. I'm Rich Alton and today we are going to go through a principle that can help you drastically improve your striking skills and this principle is titled or called the line of force. Now the line of force principle is defined as the specific functional trajectory that your strike or technique or an energy has to take. In other words, there is one specific path that a vector must travel in order to maximize force. All right, so what we want to do is I want to show you how to apply that into the basic strikes. So we're going to work with uh, jab, your cross, and your hook for your MMA techniques. Right? Now this doesn't matter whether you stand southpaw or orthodox. What, what matters is, is that is hearing to the principles that will drastically improve not only the line of force principles, but also your, your, your body position and other things that go along with these, with the, if making an effective strike. So you have things like the line of force, you have things like body stabilization, you have things like uh, one step action principles, whenever you can possibly do those. Um, but my uh, focus of force, but today we're going to cover the line of force principle because this is a principle that often gets very neglected in, in when, when uh, striking you know, uh, uh, on stationary targets, particularly like focus mix and bags. And then when it, what happens is carrying over into a real fight, oh, people wonder why their strikes aren't effective, particularly in close ranges and stuff. A lot of people have, fighters have a hard time hitting in close range because they simply just don't really spend a lot of time training in you know, in those striking, in a striking system that allows you to hit in close ranges, or they just neglect it totally and they focus more mostly on grappling. But following this principle can drastically increase your striking relatively quickly, regardless of what system or style you study. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So, in order for a strike to be uh, to have the effect that you want, it has to travel in the proper vector that you're looking for. Now, with that being said, you also have to bring utilize and connect your biggest pushing or driving muscles or your pulling muscles if it's going to be a be a hook in here but if we're talking about a linear punch first we're going to start with a we're going to start with your you know horizontal jab or your boxing cross jab um, you have to get the right pushing muscles in that proper line of force irregardless of how small you are or how big you are okay so what that looks like basically is if we take a flat surface in here, and what I'm uh, not trying to strike hard right at this moment, but what I'm trying to do is I want to try to find the apex of what what your your punching range normally is. So when people hit focus pit, uh, mitts in here, they're normally trying to hit right out here like this. Even if the mitt comes back at them a little bit, you know, as they resist it in here, right? Everyone's trying to hit out here, okay? And what happens is a lot is when when people are not there and they suddenly move in real fast in here, in here, they don't have the leverage to hit because they're always anticipating that the person's going to be out here. Okay, this is why I simply a lot of boxing punches can fall apart really easily in an MMA bout because when a person moves in very quick and crashes this crashes this range in here, and I hit kind of bent in here like this when I thought I was going to hit out here, right? because they're not prop following a proper line of force. So if you think about a, a bench press or a pushing in here, when you do a bench press or a push up, right, there's kind of one position that you, when you put your limbs, you know, on, your, on the ground in here, like this, if you look at it from this angle, there's one position in here that allows you to use your pecs, your shoulders, your backs, your triceps in here, and kind of puts your forearm, you know, in the proper trajectory in here, right? So if I can do a bench press or a push up, uh, here like this and kind of maximize my pushing muscles well, that's the same thing when applied to striking so often what happens is is you'll see you know fighters they'll have their um they'll have their hands in here uh up here like this like so a common guard like this and a lot of times when they do a throw a linear strike in here let's just talk about a jab is their punch a lot of times will kind of swat like this right it kind of has a looping effect in here and if you notice my kind of elbow kind of wings out a little bit and the fist is kind of pointed you know, across my center line. 
And so what happens is the punch kind of has like a hammering kind of a tricep extension effect. And what happens is, is out here, if I set myself up on the pad and I hit out here like this in here, and I hit, you know, I can hit powerful out here like this because he's stationary, okay, out here. When he goes, well, that's fine, right? But what happens when he steps in in here, right? If he steps in on super fast in here and I hit like this, this thing just glances right off in here, right? So, or what happens when we are, we do find ourselves this close in here and I have to deliver a technique, right? And I, I'm gonna throw a, a straight punch in here. I can't simply hit hard from right here. I simply just don't have the leverage because I'm not utilizing the biggest pushing muscles in conjunction with the proper vector, okay? So that is kind of a cut and dry uh, definition of the line of force. So to find the, 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 the proper trajectory for, let's say, the jab in here, right, if you're throwing a horizontal punch in here like this, is what would be where you could get your forearm in that trajectory as fast as possible, assuming that I'm gonna have to hit right here. In other words, I wanna be able to throw the same punch whether it's from here or whether it's from right here, okay? So you gotta make sure that you have your hands up, obviously, and when you're gonna deliver this punch is to get the forearm, right, the, the three knuckles right here, and the forearm in that trajectory as fast as possible. So the punch has to come off your shoulders and travel this way. It cannot travel on a center line motion like this. See, there's a swatting action here, and I'm basically putting my elbow, you know, hyperextending my elbow right here like this. Okay, it has to travel this way if you look at it from this trajectory. So it would look something like this. I would bring it, I would bring this the elbow out, out here like this. And if I even took my finger and kind of pointed and I made a fist in here, this is the trajectory for that strike. Okay, and pulling it back. So I would have to come up, create this motion, and then drive it forward like so. Okay, if I don't do that and I don't follow the line of force, let's say my fist is pointed up at the ceiling before I deliver the technique, then what happens is it's not strong until at the very end of the strike. In other words, the last three quarters of the punch is strong. The first three quarters of it is very, very weak in here like this, particularly if he steps in. So if he steps in right now, boom, and I hit right here, I wasn't anticipating that, and that's gonna fold. And that's why a lot of strikes fall apart in close ranges because they cannot, they don't practice hitting in that, in that close range. So you have to use some physics behind this in here, and you have to modify the way you throw your traditional boxing punches in here. You cannot throw them with your elbows coming out like this. You're simply just arm punching in here, okay? So again, let's kind of show this from a, a, a different angle like this. If you look at it from this way, right? When I bring this thing up, so I'm in range, I bring my elbow up, and my form is flat. I'm hitting with the top with the top three knuckles, not the top two. Okay, and I'm literally rotating off my shoulder line there. Okay, so let's see that again. Up and there. So I'm gonna get to here as fast as I possibly can. Let this shoulder kind of come out, raise my lat up like this, and then in. Okay, now what happens goes back this way. I step in this super close. This is where this thing really works real well. So let's go this way in here. So I get in real close in here and I get my arm in this position. Okay, obviously I gotta stabilize my body and I bring my arm up right from here again and I deliver it from there. Up, okay, see how strong is? I'm still in the proper line of force. I get even closer in here. Okay, ready? Three, two, one, again. Okay, I'm getting closer in here. See, I still got a good driving punch in here because my form is in that trajectory irregardless right, of distance in here. Okay? That is the line of force principle for a jab. All right? Same thing applies for a rear cross. So let's go over on this side. So your rear cross, in my case, my left cross in here, the same trajectory. Right, it's not coming off my shoulders like this. It's not coming from here. See, my elbow stays down in here. If you look at my forearm from this angle, it swats. See how it's bent right here? So that means when I throw the punch and he moves in, clunk. Uh-oh, I was anticipating I was gonna hit out here, okay? 
So I have to do the same thing. I've got to get my forearm in the proper trajectory, and it has to travel off my shoulder line. It has to revolve around this vector. The technique is going this way in here like this, okay? It's not coming from the center. It's not coming, you know, it's not squatting down in here like this. Not from here. It's not looping out, okay? It's driving straight, right, in here like this. So, uh, let's back up a little bit here. Yeah, okay, so from here, bring this thing up, create that point, flat. Here, like that. See how that forearm is up like this, hitting with those top knuckles? So a lot of times it's really easy to hit the focus pad and I kind of hit bent like this, my elbow down, right? And what happens is, is if you were to put some resistance on there and push against my forearm in here, I probably can use muscle in here like this, but see that's collapsing because my elbow is below my wrist, okay? So, but if I get my forearm in the right trajectory and I stabilize my body and he pushes against me, right, he don't, I don't move. Right? And I also, if I get in real close, come in real close in here, and he stabilizes in here, if I put my body in the right spot, you can also do a little check in here to see if you're in the right line of force. Because I can push against him without hardly using any strength, and my body is perfectly stabilized. Right? So that is the line of force principle for a rear cross. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at how to find the line of force for a effective or proper hook punch. Okay, so the same principles in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put my body in, a, in the position that I feel would be in a position of strength and power for a hook punch. Okay, so I want my forearm in the trajectory of this pad. That means that my knuckles, okay, my, knu my knuckles in here, my wrist bone, and all of my radius, okay, have to be right behind each other. Okay, so technically this is like a curl, okay, delivered this way, right here. So this is a big no-no. You do not want to hit like this because if you don't hit flat in here, you're going to break your wrist. Okay, so a lot of times fighters will throw a hooking punch like that and they're just, it's like swinging a, you know, swinging a string with a rock and they're just hitting with the velocity of the technique. They really don't have their mass behind it. So I got to have my pec muscles Right, my pec muscles, my bicep, and my back, right, they're the ones doing the driving here like this. Okay, so starting with your, your, your you know, technique from here, get relatively close, you're going to step forward a couple times, and he's going to kind of just brace the pad, you're not going to hit at first, but you're going to step in a range where you should be, think you should deliver the technique, bring the punch out with the elbow up here, and then you're going to create your turn, and then stabilize like this. You should feel stabilized with all the punches. You should not be leaning on the pad, okay? Part of the line of force is that you're also stabilized. Okay, so again, a little faster. I'm gonna step forward, bring my arm out, come around. Again. And then stabilize, okay? So that is how to throw the hook in that line of force. Now, let's take a look at what it really is not, just to kind of give you a little reality check. You can do this with all your punches, right? Just like I just did with the rear cross, right? <laughs> is put the hook punch right in here and stabilize yourself and your partner's gonna stabilize. And what he's gonna do is he's gonna push at a right angle into you in here and you're gonna resist. Now, there I wasn't in the line of force because my body wasn't on the right spot. Okay, so the way you can tell is that when you put your body in the right spot, okay, and, and he pushes into me in here, you should be able to race in here like this. Now, let's say that I, I'm in here like this and he resists, right? I should be able to move him relatively easily in here like this. If my elbow's low like this, okay, and he resists, I can't move him. If I'm too far out here and he resists, I can't move him because now I don't have my core muscles behind the punch and basically sitting with my arm. Okay, so the forearm has to be in, let's go this way a little bit, the forearm has to be behind the knuckles and in line with the elbow 
here. Okay? That is a line of force for a hook punch. Now let's go ahead and take a look at a couple different angles so you can get a little better perspective on each of what the punches look like. The line of force for each and every strike must start and travel from the point of conception and continue on the correct vector until it reaches its intended target. By finding the correct line of force, one can deliver incredible power from just a few inches regardless of distance. Remember, fighting situations are unpredictable and people can close a distance in a split second. Therefore, you must anticipate this and be ready to deliver your intended strike closer than you think. Practice striking along the best line of force for each one of your techniques. Thank you for watching and if you found this information to be informative, please leave a comment, subscribe to my channel to stay updated on future tactics and technique tips.